Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, March 31st, and it is a rainy, cool spring day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Yesterday was glorious. We had uh, 70 degrees, just a beautiful day. It was a little cloudy, but hey, I'll take it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's looking looking good. The baseball season has started. The Phillies are looking really good. Better than the Braves, at least. Um, yeah, they've really done some nice, uh, nice team building in the off season, and it's looking really good. But as a lifelong Phillies fan, you learn to expect disappointment. So, we'll see what happens. <laughs> There's people already planning for the playoffs. I, I want to give it a little bit more time. They only played two games. So, today I've got this um, 7LE, I think this is 311KS. Um, thank you, Christian. Very generous gift from a friend of mine. And I'm smoking some Haunted Bookshop. I've once again managed to buy and smoke through an entire pound of haunted bookshop that I intended to sell her. Now, my defense, I did put a couple ounces in a jar, so that's but, but it hasn't gotten to the cellar yet, so I hope it gets there. And uh, I gave away a few ounces, but the mass, vast majority of this pound I've once again managed to smoke. Um, I don't know what Cornell and Deal is putting in the haunted bookshop, but it's probably illegal because I just, <laughs> once I have it, I cannot stop smoking it. So I'm going to probably challenge myself for a couple of months and not buy any more. Just enjoy some of the other things that I have. Got a bit of a mess in front of me, but I always have a bit of a mess in front of me. <laughs> uh, let's see, four four pipes that I'm finishing up today, and then another two that I'm going to start this evening. Uh, good fun, a lot, lot, of, lot of neat stuff. Um, if you watched my Friday uh, road ramble video this week, you know that I've been pretty busy uh, work-wise, and I had to do a business trip this week, and... Uh, yeah, finding time to come down here in the shop is, is uh, I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing to do, and it's a real luxury when I can do it, but it's been hard to, to just find the time over the past week. Uh, but this weekend, uh, unfortunately, it was beautiful yesterday, and I really wanted to be outside, but I did a little bit of yard work, uh, a little bit of, uh, ran a few errands, and then I spent most of the day uh, down here. And I've been thinking for a long time, couple of years now that I should make some sort of a small uh, not really a bench but just like a post that I could use to do stem work um, you know just something to like le level hold the stem against while I'm filing or or maybe even a little vice on it or something that I could take outside and because you know days like yesterday I just hate to be stuck inside down here but I got I got to do the work and I love doing the work uh, so if I could get those things outside and, and actually do it, that would be nice. Plus, I wouldn't have to sweep up the ebonite shavings. They just blow away. Maybe. I think my wife would make me sweep them up. I laugh sometimes. You watch uh, guys that are uh, into woodworking and, and they have these garage shops and they'll often say things like, well, you know, on a nice day I'll wheel my table saw out in the out in the driveway and then the sawdust just blows away and I'm thinking, you know, my my neighbors would be really upset with me if I did that. <laughs> yeah, I I guess there's some places where you could get away with it, but I don't think uh I don't think it's a kind thing to do, frankly. Um, you know, maybe if you live out in uh in the middle of nowhere, but if you got close by neighbors you probably don't wanna have sawdust blowing around. Um 
I actually feel bad when I brush the dogs. Sometimes, you know, you, you brush them and the hair's coming off, and sometimes like a, a clump of it gets away and goes blowing down the down, across the yard and out of the yard. And I think, gee, that's nobody's going to want to see that blowing by their house. And, but what can you do? Huh. That's a tangent I didn't think I was going to go on. So, um, busy day today. Got to go out with the wife and do some shopping. It's a standard Sunday affair with us now, which is nice. We get to go out and we'll, open, we'll either have breakfast here or we'll go out to breakfast. I think we're going to go out today. And, uh, yeah, just spend a little bit of time out. And uh, I am glad that she's going because one of the things I need to do is I need to get some more of those foam nail boards that I use when I'm working on stems. Uh, the, the ones I've got have just given up the ghost. They, they actually last a long time. I can usually get uh, six or eight stems out of one of them. But I want to go to the... I've been buying them at... Uh, like CVS and you know drugstores like that, and they're pricey. And I want to see if this uh, Sally Hansen shop has a better deal on them. But I don't want to go into the Sally Hansen shop by myself and ask for nail files. Back when I was doing a lot of fly tying, I eventually stopped using it, but for a while I was using um, Sally Hansen Hard as Nails to, as a head cement to, to like cement the threads that you use when you're tying off the fly. Just put a nice hard head on it so that it doesn't unravel. And a lot of guys use the, the Hard as Nails uh, for that, and I used to always be making my poor wife go buy it for me because I'm Guys just don't like to, to buy that sort of stuff. But I actually got away from it, not because I I didn't want to buy it, but because uh, I found that, that some spar varnish actually works a lot better. It, it um, saturates the threads much better. Spar varnish is what I would use when I was making bamboo rods, and I, I realized when I was using that to coat the threads, it, it, it really hardened them up quite nicely. And, uh, you know, on a... On a um, graphite fly rod, you use epoxy to do that. And uh, on a bamboo, you don't use the epoxy, you use the varnish. And the varnish was every bit as solid as the epoxy, and I was pretty impressed by that. So, you know, transferring that over to fly tying was an obvious thing for me, and that's what uh, I still use today. It's cheap. You can buy a, a quart of spar varnish for probably what you would pay for a little jar of the Sally Hansen stuff. And then I dilute it, uh, like, oh, two parts varnish to one part turpentine. So it thins out quite a bit that way. Yeah. Fly tying is one of those hobbies where you you sort of find things that work. You know, you, you, you look around you're con when you're into fly tying, you're constantly looking for something that might be useful in a fly. You know, so I was forever bringing home little bits of foam packaging from work and, you know, finding, oh, Christmas was great, like Christmas tinsel and stuff like that, yeah. <laughs> and then as, as I sort of matured in the hobby, I decided, well, I'm just going to stick with classic patterns and not go too crazy, although I occasionally still tie some flies for bluegill and they're fun because bluegill will eat anything so you can kind of get crazy with them and put some some wacky synthetic stuff in but for my trout flies i, I pretty much only use natural materials and traditional uh, fly tying materials so yeah there's nothing wrong with the synthetic materials and you know fly tying has really evolved as a as a hobby, and there's all kinds of, you know, materials that are better at reflecting UV light, and uh, even like artificial legs that are cast in, in some sort of a plastic that you just tie directly to the hook. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, it's just not 
the style of fly that I enjoy tying and, and using. So I'm, I'm much more of the old school. Um, I tie a lot of classic Catskill patterns and use, uh, you know, mostly, as, well, actually exclusively natural materials for those. Uh, I, I should probably, <laughs> I get some got so many plans that I never get anything done, but I should at some point do a, uh, a fly tying video just for fun. I uh, wouldn't, wouldn't actually expect to do many of them. Uh, I'm certainly not going to teach fly tying, but just kind of take you through the steps. I think you might enjoy that. And if you're a fly tire, you can watch it and make fun of me. So, there you go. Now, one of the problems, and this gets into a something I did want to talk about is that my eyesight is not what it used to be and right now I actually can't tie a fly. So I have been having issues with cataracts and they came on pretty suddenly over the past two years maybe. <coughs> Excuse me. And I don't know if it's um, if it had anything to do with the with the cancer treatments. Um, there's sort of mixed information on that. Sorry, the pipes are doing something there. Um, I, I suspect that it didn't help, but at any rate, they, they've been progressing pretty quickly, and I'm going to see a specialist um, this week to find out you know, what I can do, because it's gotten to the point where I'm okay with distance vision, I, I can still drive and everything. Um, driving at night is not good because the glare is really bad. But when I'm doing up close work, uh, for example working on pipes, it's a lot harder. So I wind up wearing uh, my head visor a lot more often and, and uh, that that's great for pipes, but for things like fly tying it's just, it just not really uh, doable long term because uh, with the pipe I can you know if I'm working on a stem I, I can pretty much sand the stem and then put the head visor on to like examine it and see where I need to spend some more time and all that but when you're tying a fly you're constantly working with those tiny things and you know it would have to constantly be on and it just is annoying uh, it also hurts my eyes a bit it's a strain there's some strain looking through a magnifier for a long time So I'm going to see this specialist and I suspect, although I don't know, but I suspect that I'm going to need to get um, cataract surgery sooner than I thought. Um, you know, when, when this first started two years ago, the, it was, you know, another, another ten years or so before we'll need to do anything, but they've really come on quickly. Um, it's worse in one eye than the other. which means a lot of times I try to look at something and people think I'm winking at them. That's helpful. Anyway, uh, I will be going this, I think it's Thursday that I see the specialist and I'll get a plan of action then. And my wife has already informed me that I will not be doing any shop work when I get the surgery, which uh, I guess I guess that's a reasonable thing to do. But uh, we'll see. I probably will stop taking any orders um, for, for pipe work when I, when I get that surgery scheduled and we'll just see how long it takes for, for that. It's not, a, it's not a major procedure, I mean they're quite common now and usually your vision is better afterwards than it was before you got the cataracts because uh, they can put corrective lenses in and stuff like that. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes but uh, yeah probably we'll be shutting down for a bit when that happens and I'll, I'll keep you posted. And I, she might not let me work down here, but she'll let me make videos, so I'll, I'll keep doing that. So, I should probably get going, because the, the reason you're hearing the pipes knocking is that... <laughs> I was going to say, the reason you're hearing the pipes knocking is that my wife just uh, started to take a shower and the furnace will be coming on soon. You know what? I'm not going to wait for it to go off because I was just about to say goodbye. So pardon the furnace. 
But I hope you all have a great week, and I thank you for watching. And until we speak again, I look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.